Stay with me a bit longer, Lady Daphne. Always chat with him before you chop him down. Three, five, four, fum. A bleating jester has come. I'll set my hound on you, you bum rag. Whoa there. Just curious why you were talking to a tree. But all in all, not my concern. Wait. Hold now. My dent is up true, for scoundrels come and laugh at me. But you, you're... Uh, well, just what the demon are you? A witcher. Name's Geralt. So, folk laugh at you because... Hold up. A witcher, you say? Like in Luis Herrera's tales and fables. Luckier than a green, bleeding leprechaun I am. See? Not a soul around believes this tree is Daphne, the cursed lady of legend. But you... you could lift the curse! Bit too old to believe in bedtime stories, aren't you? Want your chops busted, Witcher? How old I am, that is none of your porking concern. Fair point. Not my business what you believe, either. Ha! Huh. I'm content we see eye to eye. So what makes you think there's a girl cursed inside the tree? Well, I came out with my dog, Moholt, to cut her down. Axe in hand, a broad swing I took. The edge burrowed deep in her trunk, and bum botch me if blood didn't spurt forth. My jaw dropped in the dirt, but right then I knew. Every jot of it in the tale of Daphne, Gareth, and the Witch of Lynx Craig. Don't tell me. From Herrera's tales and fables. You porking bet. Second edition. I meant it in Octavo. I know those tales by heart. My nan read them to put me to sleep. Guess she read it cover to cover, colophon included. Got me curious, gotta admit. You really think the old tales are true? Taking the weepy, are you? Do you think me bore me? No, it's just these are dark, grim times. No room for nights pure of heart or happily ever afters. So I don't often run into folk like you. Yes, true, the times are crud, Pai. But I see this as all the more reason to remember the tales. My gran would say, If you know not what to do, think to the chessboard knight and noble Alondra and the path they would choose. She schooled me so thorough in it, I could not do otherwise even if I wished to. Let me take a look at the tree. Careful now. Isolated. No other trees near it. Logger was making good time. Strange, though. Willows isolated. No other trees near it. Close. Mm hmm. Actually, does bleed. Pretty incredible. Looks wondrous. Did I not say so? My help doesn't come free, you know. You speak to a lowly woodcutter. No stench of coin about me. Lower. You must go lower. Willing I am to pay, but I've not near that much. 
Agreed. I will pay as soon as the young mate is free. Willing to help, but first I gotta figure out where to start. No need. I know it all. Miss Daphne and Sir Gareth shared a terrible and fearsome love for each other. Yet to prove himself worthy of her hint, Gareth was to face the Witch of Lynx Crag. Before Sir Gareth set off for the hill, Miss Daphne gave him her kerchief, a token of her favor. Let me guess, he never returned. He did not. She stood here, day upon day, night upon night, trying to spy him. Till she sprouted roots and turned into a tree? Wonder why. I will fecking tell you why. To await the moment when Gareth returns, kerchief in hand. That is the power of love. The power of longing. So you must scale Link's Craig. Search there for a means to free Daphne. I will give you my book of tales to refer to. And good luck, Witcher. Go, go. See, no, the Duke of Death, the Duke of Night, no, the Duke of Death, the Duke of Death, Come on, Roach. Work from dawn to dusk's last light, then give my wife a good love. Stand 
Sounds like an angry. Renovations coming along all right, Barnabas Basil? Superbly, sir. General refurbishment has been completed. And I took the liberty of adding two racks, each upon which you might hang weapons and armor, if you've some pieces you'd like to display. Likewise, I have prepared a few spots in which new paintings might be hung. In other news, the laborers dusting out the cellar have made a most unusual discovery. I believe it's something you'll wish to see. If you say I should see it, I'll go see it right now, BB. at one time. Scrub often. You'll mm -hmm. soon need a coffin. Renovations coming along all right. I am delighted to inform you we have completed our labors. You can now devote yourself to enjoying the vineyard's delights to the fullest. You must forgive me my temerity, sir, but I thought, with all the work on Corfo Bianco completed, and with the estate looking more beautiful than ever, it might be appropriate to commemorate the moment. Sure, why not? During the tidying that preceded the renovations, I came across a bottle of Sepramento, the 1250 vintage. I cannot say by what miracle it survived, 
but it is here, and we've course to open it today. And then he ran straight into the crowd, burning bouquet in hand. All thought it a part of the performance, so they only laughed, even when the decor began to catch fire. It was not until the flames engulfed Baron Mahefkin's beard that folk began to realize something was amiss and went to put out the fires. <laughs> Sounds like Monsieur Bolius and Madame Nina threw some first-rate balls here. It was so. In this regard, Baron Rossel was decidedly more reserved. So tell me, Barnabas Basil, what's the wine situation like here? Am I going to produce any this year? This year is out, I fear, sir. Last autumn, a fungus destroyed all the vines. Baron Rossel had new ones planted, but it will be some time before they start bearing fruit. Assuming that is, the fungus does not reappear. Hmm, that'd be bad. This Sepramento got me dreaming. It's amazing. Isn't it, though? Allow me to top you off, sir. There. Thanks. That's it, Roach. 